Welcome back to channel everyone. In today's video, I'll showcase you five modern button control hacks that will completely change how you build your power apps. From your left navigation menu to your active filters, to your sorting features, to your view energy icons, to your reset buttons, to your new forms submit button. Everything in one go. Let's just talk about how we build this. First, if we talk about the left navigation, I have created this uh, left nav menu item using the modern button controls and I have uh, used the font sizing to increase and decrease the font size when it is in expanded and collapsive mode. So if we go into my power apps, go to the components, inside my left nav component, I have used gallery which is loading the left nav menu from my named formula, icon, screen and title properties. And uh, inside the gallery, I have used button and this button is having a text property, which is fetching this item dot titles from this gallery menu items. And in the icon, it is fetching this item dot icon that I have defined in its parent. And the layout I have chosen is icon before. And if I scroll down, that is type, I have selected the type as primary. So in modern button controls, when you select the type based on what you have defined in your themes, it picks uh, the color theme accordingly. We'll talk about the themes other day, but this is how it is. And if we go to the font size property, I have set if nav expand is true, set the font size to 20, else it will be 30. And this nav expand, I've set the on select property of this uh, hamburger menu. And this give you this kind of experience. When it's into expanded mode, this is the font size. When collapsive mode, this is the font size. And you will see a nice over effect as well that is coming out of your modern themes. Second is are this sort icons. Typically when we build the sort, we either use a text control then the icon controls, but what I've done is I've used the button control here as well. And in the text for the first button, I've defined this as UID and uh, the icon property, you'll see that I have written a logic here, I'll not talk about the formula in details. I've already created a video for this. I'll provide link in description. You can check this out as well. But how we design this is this way. And uh, in on the on select of this, just to showcase you, how the logic is working. I have set these uh, update context variable, where sort column, where sort order descending. All right. And if you see on the gallery items, this is what we have defined. And this is how it is working. And the third thing that we're going to talk about is this active filters. So whenever users select any filters, it shows in the active filter section and it is automatically resized based on what we select here. Let's suppose I search for UID and description compact. You will see that uh, the compact is showing there and I can click on this. It will clear that compact filler. Now only the pro system filter is applied. I can clear this as well. If I select multiple filters, I have an option to reset all them from here. If you see, I have uh, created a buttons for uh, the number of filter I have. I have four filters. So I've created four buttons. The text property of this button will be on which control you want to apply the filter. So it will pick up the value of that. So this button will show in the text that and uh, the icon I have selected as a dismissed circle because for all uh, the button, this is what I needed. When user click on, it will uh, reset that particular control. So if you go to the on select property, it will reset that particular combo box. And on this reset icon, I'm resetting all four controls that I have. For the button control, I have given a width that is pretty much flexible based on what input controls we are using for this particular button. Next we have is uh, this view and added icon. You see there, I have selected this one as a primary theme and this one as a secondary themes and I've set the border radius for this button. If we go here, see this, nothing I did. I just uh, set up the border radius. If I just turn this to zero, you will see this is how our button will look alike. 
But if I set the radius to 40, it will transform this. And if I change the type, you will see the type is changed as well. And you can set the icon style as well. And uh, similar things for this reset button as well. I have set the border radius. Rest uh, the layout is icon only. And on this button as well, the layout is icon only because there is icon before, after, text only and icon only. So you can select out of them. The last one that we have is our typical save, submit, approve, reject button that we create. And this you can have icon and then text, the combo of both in modern button controls. Let's suppose if I create an entry test one, type something here. And if I'll just uh, save this, it will give us a loading spinner and then submit our record. Once I click on this, it will showcase it has submitted the record. So just to showcase you how this work, if you see in the text property, I'm saying if is processing is true, the text will be written as processing three dots, else it would be submitted. And this I have defined on the on select property of this. And on the on this form submit, there is on success and on failure function. And on the on success, I'm setting each processing as false and then notifying the user, resetting the form, navigating user to gallery design screen. Similar things on the on failure as well. We are uh, setting each processing false, notifying the user. Now to make that uh, loading spinner, I have created a timer control. The duration for this timer control is thousand. That means one second. There is a on timer end function. I have created a spin angle variable and I'm setting if spin angle is greater than 360, set this to zero, else spin angle plus 30 is what I've defined. And if I go to my button property here, there is a property called icon rotation. On that icon rotation, I've set if is processing is true, means when user click on the submit, it will give the value of spin angle, whatever value in spin, spin angle we have, else it will set to zero. I repeat, I have set to true and start will be, it will start when each processing is true. So this timer will start whenever this button is clicked. And if you see the icon, we have set the same things. If each processing is true, there will be a sync icon, else it will be save icon. By default, you have this uh, save icon in place. And also for this button, if we go to the display mode, you can set the display mode of this button. If its processing is true, you can set this to disabled, else it will be display mode not added. So if we go here in the form, the time I hit this button, you will see it will be disabled automatically and it is processing after that. So that's how you can uh, do it. It prevent the user from unnecessary clicking multiple times to that button. So this way you can use your modern button controls in your power apps uh, to achieve most of the functionality and uh, using uh, different techniques and innovative ways. There are multiple things that you can explore with uh, the modern button controls, but these are the some that I've shown you. I hope you like this one. If you do like, don't forget to subscribe to Tech. Thank you so much for watching.